In this video, we're looking at boiling and freezing points, uh, characteristic properties in grade 9 advanced science. Um, you may be given a certain substance at a certain temperature and be asked to predict whether that substance would be solid, liquid, or gas. Or perhaps you'll be given a temperature and asked to, to list all the different substances which might be gas at that temperature or which might be liquid at that temperature. Okay, so let's start with just uh, noting what melting points and boiling points mean. If you take aluminum, the first substance in that list, um, its melting point is 660 degrees Celsius. So if you have a aluminum at any temperature below 660 degrees Celsius, the aluminum is going to be solid. So we can, and that'll be true for any of the substances in this list. If the temperature is lower than the melting point, the substance would be solid. So you might, on your solubility charts, want to simply write in on the far left the word solid. So whenever the temperature is below the melting point, the substance is a solid. Going back to aluminum, if you raise the temperature up to 660 degrees Celsius, then you've reached its melting point. The aluminum would start to melt. The temperature, while it's melting, would remain at 660 degrees Celsius until it was finished melting, and then, now that it, now there's no more solid, it's only liquid, the temperature would then start to rise again if you were still heating. So above 660 degrees Celsius, the substance has turned into liquid, and that is true for any of the substances in the list, with the exception of carbon dioxide, which doesn't actually melt. It, it says it sublimes at minus 78 degrees. So carbon dioxide would turn from a solid directly into a gas at minus 78 degrees Celsius. For all of the other substances, once you have just gone past their melting points, the substances will be in the liquid state. So you may want to write the word liquid in between the melting and boiling points. Going back up to aluminum, if you were to keep heating the substance, so once it was completely melted, keep heating, the temperature would rise, 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 until it reached 2,470 degrees Celsius. At that extremely high temperature, your liquid aluminum would start to boil. You'd see bubbling inside, and vapor of aluminum vapor would be produced. So now that you're boiling, the liquid's level would drop and drop and drop as you're creating more and more vapor, and eventually there'd be no more liquid aluminum left, and if you kept heating, the temperature then would continue to rise past 2470 degrees, but if the temperature's above that, you now have only gaseous aluminum. There's no more liquid left, and that would be true for most of the substances in that list. When you reach um, above the boiling points, there will be only the gas phase. Now, a few exceptions to that, you'll notice that for a few substances, they say that they actually don't boil, they decompose. Citric acid, for example, at 153 degrees, solid citric acid would be converted to liquid citric acid. However, if you heat past 153, the liquid will get hotter and hotter and hotter, but instead of boiling at some certain temperature, it would begin to break down chemically. It would turn to something other than citric acid. It starts to decompose. So you don't get gaseous citric acid. You get a chemical reaction happening. It doesn't tell me the temperature at which that occurs. It just means though that it doesn't actually boil. It just breaks down into simpler substances. And there's a couple other substances, potassium nitrate and sodium nitrate, that do similar things. Now, what, what is a typical question you might be given on a test? Well, let's suppose we're given a temperature. Let's say we'll just pick a temperature of 75 degrees Celsius. And you're asked, at 75 degrees Celsius, list all of the substances in the list which would be liquids at 75 degrees Celsius. Substances that would be liquid. Now, there may be only a few substances. Let's take a look. To be a liquid, looking at the words we wrote, means that the temperature, 75 degrees, has to be higher than the melting point and yet lower than the boiling point. So for example, if we were to think of aluminum, it melts at 660, so 75 degrees Celsius would be to the left of the melting point on a number line, and so that means aluminum would be in the solid state. For ammonia, 
75 degrees Celsius is to the right on a number line of its boiling point. So therefore, it's higher than minus 33 degrees Celsius. So for aluminum, sorry, for ammonia, 75 degrees Celsius, it would be in the gas phase. So where is 75 degrees higher than the melting point, but lower than the boiling point? It's in between them. So going down the list, the first substance where I see 75 degrees is above a melting point, but below a boiling point. The first substance where that's true looks to be paradichlorobenzene. Notice that 53 degrees Celsius is where it melts, but 174 is where it boils. So 75 degrees Celsius is in between those two. So paradichlorobenzene would be a substance which is a liquid at 75 degrees Celsius. Is there any other substance which is like that? Well, looking down the list, lauric acid melts at 44 degrees, boils at 299. So again, 75 degrees is in between those. Lauric acid would be a liquid at 75 degrees Celsius. And you can pause the video and see if there's any other substances that would, that would meet that uh, description. If you chose mercury, that's another one. Mercury melts at minus 38 and it boils at 356, so 75 degrees is in between those two. And anything else on this list? Well, palmitic acid melts at 63 degrees, boils at 333 degrees, so again, 75 degrees is in between. And then lastly, a very common substance, of course, well, I missed one, sorry, to propanol would also work. It uh, melts at minus 89 and boils at 83. So 75 is pretty close to its boiling point, but it's still below, so it would be a liquid. And the substance I was about to refer to, something we're all familiar with, water, of course, at 75 degrees would be liquid because that's above its freezing point of zero and below its boiling point of 100 degrees. Now, what about... I try to erase my highlighting there. So what about a um, another temperature? Let's pick a temperature of, oh, let's say minus 10 degrees Celsius. As I change the color of my ink, minus 10 degrees Celsius. And now let's say what substances would be gases at minus 10 degrees Celsius? Pause the video and see if you can pick out the answers. Substances that at minus 10 would be gases. So if we want the um, substance to be a gas, then this temperature, minus 10 degrees, has to be above its boiling point. right? So looking at aluminum, for example, it boils at 2470 degrees Celsius. Minus 10 is well below that. So the aluminum would not be a gas. Um, so, but the ammonia, the second substance, it boils at minus 33. So the minus 10 degrees is above minus 33. It's over here. And so ammonia would be a substance which would be gas at minus 10. Another substance where minus 10 is higher than the boiling point would be chlorine. Chlorine boils at minus 34. So minus 10 degrees Celsius, it would definitely be a gas. Going down the list, minus 10 is higher than the boiling point of hydrogen. It's also higher than the boiling point of oxygen. And I think that's it on this list. So those are the, the four substances which would be gases at minus 10 degrees Celsius. Now suppose this time I give you a um, substance, and this time I will pick a substance, let's say, oh, lauric acid, and I, I'm going to ask you to give me a temperature for lauric acid where it would be solid. At what temperature would lauric acid be solid? And there's an infinite number of answers you could give me, but to pick a temperature that's reasonable for lauric acid to be solid. So you find lauric acid on the list, here it is, lauric acid, and you notice to be solid means that the temperature has to be less than the melting point. 
so less than 44 degrees Celsius. So any temperature less than 44.1 degrees Celsius, it would be a solid state. Okay? So you could have said 20 degrees, you could have said minus 30 degrees, at any temperature below 44.1, it would be in a solid state. How about a different substance? This time we'll take palmitic acid and give me a temperature where palmitic acid is likely to be in a liquid state. And again, there's a whole bunch of answers, but pick a temperature where palmitic acid would be liquid. So you notice its, boy, its melting point is 63 degrees, so any temperature below 63, it's a solid state. Its boiling point was 333, so any temperature above 333, it would be in the gas phase. So if we wanted it to be in the liquid state, we would pick in between 63 and 333. If we want a gas phase, we want anything above 333. So there's a different, different, a whole bunch of different temperatures you could have picked. Now we'll do one last example here, paradichlorobenzene. I'm going to pick a temperature and you tell me which phase it would be in. So paradichlorobenzene, suppose the temperature was 90 degrees Celsius. What temperature would you expect paradichlorobenzene to be at 90, sorry, what phase would it be, solid liquid gas, at 90 degrees Celsius? Well, you notice that it melts at 53. 90 degrees is above 53, so it's definitely going, not going to be a solid. But 90 degrees Celsius is less than its boiling point of 174, so since 90 degrees was in between those two, the, P the PDB, the paradichlorobenzene, would be a liquid state. Staying with PDB, what temperature, what phase would it be, solid liquid gas, at room temperature? Well, room temperature is close to 20 degrees Celsius, so for PDB, it melts at 53. 20 degrees Celsius is less than 53, so at 20 degrees Celsius, PDB would be a solid. What if you put some PDB into boiling water? Okay, you have a boiling water bath and you drop some um, PDB into it. We'll assume it doesn't dissolve in the water, but does it melt in the water? Does it, does it boil in the water? Does it remain solid in the water? The water's boiling. We know that boiling water is at 100 degrees Celsius. 100 degrees Celsius is in between 53 and 174, so therefore the PDB would still would be in a liquid state. It would be melted, and as long as it's not dissolving, it would be inside the water. If it were more dense than water, the liquid PDB would sink to the bottom. If it were less dense than the water, the PDB would be floating on top of the water. The PDB would not dissolve in the water, though. All right, I hope that helps um, using boiling points and melting points to predict phases at given temperatures, or if you are um, given, you may be asked to list different substances which are at a certain phase in, at a given temperature as well. So I hope that's good for reviewing for your test, reviewing for your exam. Good luck.